let's continue on with part two of this tutorial. In this section, we're going to be constructing our covers and casing in. We'll begin by applying our spine cloth. We'll start with the left board, applying a light layer of glue in the space that's made by the line we drew on the cover, so about one inch over. We want that layer of glue to be light so that it won't smush out when you press the cloth on top of it. Now we're going to lay the cover down on top of that, matching the edge of the cloth with that line that we've made. You want to be sure to press it down really well and you want to leave even overhang at the top and bottom for your turn-ins. Now we're going to repeat this process with our center board, applying a light layer of glue to one edge. Now we're going to apply the center board to the spine cloth attached to the left board. You'll notice I've turned it so that the decorative side of the cloth is down, and I'm using my ruler as a straight edge to make sure that the bottoms of the boards line up. I'm also using that pencil mark as my guide to where to place the center cover. Now I'm going to press down the cloth and work all the edges. As you can see, I've got about an inch overhang on each board. Now we'll repeat the process with the right board. Again, a light layer of glue. And then we'll place the second piece of spine cloth along that pencil mark, leaving equal overhang at the top and the bottom. I'll be sure to smooth it down tightly and then use my bone folder to articulate the edges. Now it's time to attach this right board to the other two pieces of board. Contrary to what might seem obvious at first, you don't want those decorative sides of the cloth on the same side. You actually want it to be more on an alternating pattern like this. In order to achieve this, I'm going to go ahead and apply glue to my center board. You'll notice that I have those boards with the decorative cloth side down. Now I'm going to use my ruler as a straight edge again, and I'm going to apply the right board to the center board. The end result will be that these will fold up nicely into a Z pattern. Again, using my ruler mark as my guide and carefully pressing everything down. Then going back over it with a bone folder and working all the edges. So there you go. You can see now how it folds into a Z shape, which allows you to have two books in one. Before we can apply the cover paper, we need to mark our cloth so that we know where to place the cover paper. I'm going to make light pencil marks one eighth inch in from the edge of the cloth so that I can overlap my paper onto the cloth just a little. It's a little tricky to see, but the pencil marks are in each corner just on the cloth. I'm going to go ahead and repeat this on the other side. Then I'm going to go ahead and add cover paper to my left board. First, I'll start by gluing up the cover. Remember, I always like to put glue on the cover whenever I possibly can because the board will stand up to that moisture far better than the paper will and it will be a lot easier to work with. I'm going to put a light layer all the way across the board, almost over to the cloth, but leaving just a little bit of space. Next, I'm going to glue up a piece of cover paper. I'm going to put my line of glue about half an inch in. I don't want to go too far, but I need enough that when I place it down, it'll adhere. You'll notice I'm using the 1 8 inch marks as my guide so that I can place the paper just over the cloth. That's important because if you leave the cloth exposed, it could fray over time. 
with the paper overlapping it, you've created a seal. Now I'm going to carefully work all of this with my bone folder and articulate the edges on all sides. Next, I'm going to repeat this process on the other exterior cover. I'm going to be careful to take note of my pattern because in this paper I do technically have an up and a down. So I want to make sure that I don't have one cover up and one cover down. I'll begin, as I did with my other cover, by applying a light layer of glue. Next, I'm going to apply that light layer of glue to about a half an inch along the long edge of my cover paper. Just enough to adhere, not enough for the paper to curl really badly. Next, I'll use my 1 8 inch pencil marks and I will go ahead and apply the cover paper to the spine cloth, pressing it down from the inside to the outer edges and then I'm going to work it with my bone folder, making sure it's adhered cleanly and that I articulate all the edges. When it's finished, you'll again be able to see how this folds up into a Z shape that will make the final book. And both covers have the pattern facing the right way. Next, I'm going to trim my edges, cut my corners, and make my turn-ins. I'll be using a steel rule for this process to trim mine down to about three quarters of an inch. You could cut your own rule out of a piece of book board or you could eyeball it. I like to use my rule because it makes sure that I get the cleanest turn-ins possible. You'll see I'm working my way all around the edges and I'm going to repeat this on the other side. Next, I'm going to go ahead and cut my corners. I'm going to cut them so that they're at about a 45 degree angle and I'm going to leave about one eighth of an inch between the corner of the board and the edge of the paper where I make the cut. Again, I'll repeat this on both sides of my book. Finally, once I've trimmed all my edges and cut all my corners, I'm going to go along the edges of the book and carefully work the folds so that they're easier to make when it's time to glue them down. Next, I'm going to come along and apply a light layer of glue to each of my edges. Then I'm going to fold them over. And then I'll carefully turn it up, pressing it into the table, and folding it over to make that turn in nice and sharp. I'll come along with my bone folder and make sure that it's all pressed down nice and tight. I'll repeat this on the remaining two edges, working again at the tail and finally at the fore edge. Again, I press my turn in into the table and then I flip it over, pressing it with my bone folder to make sure that it's nice and tight. Finally, I'll pinch in the little bit of overhang so that when I turn the fore edge, my corners will be nice and mitered. I want to use a light layer of glue, and you'll notice I actually removed some on my glue paper so that I didn't have too much because the last thing I want is for the glue to smush out where I could get it on my fingers or the nice exterior cover. Again, I work that turn, making sure it's nice and tight. Then I'm going to repeat this process on the other cover. The end result will be something like this. Yeah. 
Next, I'm going to apply the cover paper to my center boards. I have to do this after I make my turn-ins so that they will lay down flat. I begin by making my mark 1 8 inch in on the, on the newly exposed spine cloth here. That will be my guide for where to place the paper. This is more or less what this will look like once I glue it into place. It's folded more or less in half and glued down across the edge of the board. I'll start by folding my little scrap in half and gluing up just a portion of it so that I have a dry part with which to work. I'll apply the glued edge using my 1 8 inch marks as my guide. Pressing it down into place. And then working it so that I know that it's nice and tight. I'll go ahead and make that fold really well so that when I glue it up the rest of the way, it's very easy to lay it down. And then to finish it, I will glue it up. And fold it over. I'm going to repeat this on the other side as you can see I've already done that here and this will be what the finished product looks like. Now it's time to case in. I'll begin by gluing up the spine wrapper on my text block. You'll notice that I'm only gluing on the non-decorative side of the cloth. I want the layer to be thick enough that it will adhere but not so thick that it's gloppy. Once it's glued, I'll take my cover and I'll take the text block and center it up top and bottom, left and right in the spine gap. Once I feel good about the placement, I'll go ahead and press down the two edges of the spine wrapper on either side, first using my fingers and then coming back with the bone folder to make sure that it's adhered nice and tightly. Once I finish this for this side, I'll repeat the process in the other side of the book. My finished product will look like this. As you can see, I have a text block on either side of the book. Now it's time to place the end pages. I'll begin by gluing up my center cover. Again, I want to always make sure that I'm putting my glue on the board whenever that's possible. That way I can glue less of my paper. Once I've glued up the cover, I'll go ahead and come back along and glue up my end sheet. I'm going to glue all the way around the outside edge, going in about a half an inch or so as I normally do, so that I can make sure that I have enough glue to make the piece of paper adhere. Again, I want to keep my layer of glue very light. I need it not to dry out, but I also don't want it to curl too badly. Next, I'll center the end sheet up on the cover, top and bottom, left and right. Once I feel good about the placement, I will carefully push it down from the inside to the outside.
I'll use my bone folder to make sure that I can get rid of any small wrinkles or bubbles that may first show up. Now I'm going to glue up the other board. In this case, it's my right board. I'll apply my layer of glue to the board directly. And when it's finished, I'll glue up the edges of my end page. Again, I'll apply about a half an inch of glue to each edge of the piece of paper. When I'm done, I'll center it up in the cover and then press it down carefully. Now that I've finished with these two, I'll flip the book over and apply the final two end sheets to the other side. The final product will look something like this. Now it's time to prep the book for pressing. I'm going to take about two pieces of scratch paper that are wider and taller than my book and tuck them between each cover and the text block. I'm doing this because I don't want my text block to get wrinkled due to the moisture from the glue. When I'm finished, I'll press the book for at least eight hours and then it will be ready.